Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today I'm going to be customizing this hinderer uh, with a black uh, scale and full bronze hardware everything except for the pocket clip and filler tab. Um, so this is actually my brother's uh, first XM18. This is one of the newer uh, XM18 three and a half inch harpoon spantos in 20 cv uh he uh, had you know he's told me for a long time he said i really want a hinderer but i want a very specific one uh i want you know because of all my ramblings when i'm around him he said i want the harpoon spanto that's the coolest blade i've seen so far but i want it in 20 cv and i want the triway so any of you hinderer nuts know that um the uh the harpoon spanto and triway has up until recently only been available in s35 en and even those were long gone these just recently came out and I don't know if there's still a few floating around out there. If I can find some, I'll provide links. In any case, there will be links for hinderer knives down in the description that you can buy as well as accessories and parts. You know, if this inspires you and you want to build one for yourself, I'll leave links so you guys can pick up whatever you want. There's tons of stuff available right now. Um, but yeah, uh, he had this idea and he said, he said uh, I want uh, all working finish. Um, I want the Harpoon Spanto and Triway and 20 CV. And then I want the front side to be black. So we've got a black G10 scale because we had, you know, sometimes you have to just pick up what's available. So thanks to uh, my buddy Slicey Dicey here, we have a black G10 scale. And subscribe to Slicey Dicey if you haven't. I'm sure you have, but subscribe to him if you haven't. Um, and then uh, we've got bronze hardware that we're going to use to match this. His, uh, my brother drives a, a Daytona Charger that is um, dark gray and uh, black and bronze. And it's funny how many guys who are knife guys are also car guys. And, and so his idea was, he said, I want it to match my car. Um, ultimately, he has an idea uh, that he wants a uh, black DLC titanium scale on the front of this, but those are not available at the moment, so he's kind of waiting on that. So in the meantime, we're going to do this. Um, but yeah, I'm going to do what I usually do. If you guys have been subscribed to my channel for a long time, you know that I do these builds in uh, Hyperlapse, and I put some music on there and just kind of show um, how I do it really, really quickly. Uh, if you have never done this before, a couple of things that are going to make this easy on you um, are having some pennies. Um, a flathead screwdriver works for the pivot, uh, but a penny works really, really well. The copper on the outside of the penny is softer, much softer than the steel on the stock pivot. So if you want to keep that intact and not have it all, you know, nard up, then uh, yeah, that works. Uh, the hinder armors tool is great and it has the slot at the front that will fit that. Um, and then it also comes with the exactly the right size of hex head for the screws, right? Because on the XM18 three and a half inch, these are not torques or at least on the standard thickness they're not torques they are hex so it comes with the right size there and then the back of this actually will fit the spanner side perfectly which is ideal for getting these undone if you don't want to spend the what are these 60 to 80 bucks you can simply cut a notch in a penny and that will work just fine or you can go down to your local hardware store and buy a spanner bit for a buck 50 250 five bucks whatever it is and then buy a little uh, quarter inch extender, you know, a manual so you can just hold on to it. Or if you have your own bit drive or something like this, which you can find down in the description, that works exceptionally well, right? Um, this uh, is, there's a couple of things I want you guys to watch out for if you're going to do this for yourself. The steel pivot is pretty resilient. Uh, it doesn't get beat up very easily. But when it comes to uh, those of you who have ordered titanium hardware or black oxide finished hardware, um, this can get messed up. You want to keep this, in my opinion, I mean, if you know a lot of people who say, well, I'm going to use it. I don't care if it gets scratched up. That's fine. But for those of you who like dressing this up and little things like, you know, little messed up corners and things like that from installing things, if that bothers you, uh, then, uh, you know, a way around that is to not use the steel head on this and even not to use a penny, but in, uh, rather use something like this. This is actually a, an old credit card that I cut and turned into a <laughs> makeshift uh, screwdriver. This is obviously much softer than the titanium. And you can get this fitted in exactly the right place using just this. Keeping the back side, so I've actually cut this and made it double thick to make it a little bit more rigid. The back end of this will be sturdy enough to get those last, you know, little turns without, because this thing is kind of bendy, right? But 
That way you can get this installed without messing it up. And I know there's a bunch of you watching thinking if I'm going to spend $425 on a hinder and another $100 on titanium hardware, I'd like it to look nice, right? So um, that's uh, just a couple of pieces of advice. Something else you're going to want to do before you start is first off, the very first thing that you should do is remove the pocket clip and the filler tab. That way it lays perfectly flat while you are pulling these screws out. And then after you remove the pocket clip and the filler tab, you're going to want to take pieces of tape and cover up this area right here where these Chicago screws are. That way, as you pull the screws out, number one, the Chicago screws don't turn in their slots. They don't usually, but that way they don't turn. Uh, and then also, they don't just fall out as soon as you remove the screw. That, that can create so much frustration. The whole knife can come flying apart, keeping those... Um, Chicago screws in there um, while you're changing it because that way you can do the screws one at a time pull and then pull the piece of tape off pull the Chicago screw out put the new one in right and everything stays in place that's going to ease a lot of the frustrations I've done this so many times and I've, I've been so frustrated you know in the past just just uh, with the process but I feel like that should make things a bit easier on a bunch of you so I wanted to um, just sort of add that in there before we get started but guys I don't know that there's a whole lot more I need to talk about. Please follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. That'd be great. Without further ado, let's get this thing put together. All right, so this turned out really, really cool. <laughs> uh, I can see why he wanted this color combination of uh, black and bronze. It just looks really, really good. Um, any little areas like this, it's just where the, like right there, it's just where the tape was connected. You can just wipe that down. Um, but yeah, um, it uh, this one was tight. Um, and if you guys run into that, you know, don't get discouraged. That's the reason for, you know, on steel, on the steel pivot, you know, you're okay using the penny, um, but uh, uh, here, well, I'm trying to find the pivot so I can show you guys. There it is. So I really cranked on that uh, pivot with the penny, and you can see there it didn't do anything to it. Now, if I'd use this, there was a chance, uh, if I'd used the penny on the titanium, there's a chance I could have gnarred that up just a little bit. Uh, and, uh, you know, definitely if you use a steel on titanium, you're definitely going to mess that up. That's just going to be the case. Don't risk it. If you really care about, if you don't care, then whatever, you know, but if you do care, don't use the steel, uh, head, don't use the steel screwdriver or the steel head of the, um, hinder armors tool on the titanium pivot, uh, because it'll mess it up. There's a chance that it'll mess it up with the penny. I've done that before. But this little stupid little uh, credit card screwdriver mod <laughs> that worked 
beautifully. You can use, I mean, like the sides here are extra strong. You know, I left a little bit of a ridge there so I can get in there. Uh, the back is kind of medium strength. And then the front is kind of the lighter for the, like the final turns or, or maybe the initial turns that worked so well. Uh, and it's just, uh, I mean, it's, you know, it's kind of a silly little thing, but you know, you can see there the pivot took zero damage. Um, you're okay using the, um, the steel hex uh, on the screws because it goes deep enough and there's enough uh, corners that are catching that it, it really, unless you're being ridiculous and like really cranking on it, you're not going to mess those up. Screws need to be screwed down and snug, not over tight. You should not be cranking on the handle screws. That's a good way to strip them out or break the heads off. Don't do that. The pivot screw, you can adjust that to get the action that you want. You can see here that this just worked out beautifully. Mike has the exact same uh, fall shut action that um, you know it came with. Um, I'm going to be pulling that back out and using Loctite on that pivot to make sure that it stays that way. Um, we had a standoff back here. I'm sure you guys noticed one of the standoffs in the back really was tight. And so if you get these, these parts are so like precision made there's the tolerances are so tight you might have a little bit of excess uh, friction sometimes so what i did is i took the um the chicago screw out uh just laid it bare and then put the uh standoff on top of it and slid it down as far as it would go and then what i did is i took my wallet and i just pressed down on top of it and the the bottom of the chicago screw was on top of a mouse pad so that way everything was soft and the pressure was slowly pushing that um that uh, standoff down on the uh, Chicago screw. There's a million ways to do that. Um, I would advise against using a hammer. That's not a good idea. Use something soft, but you can still ap apply pressure. And that way you don't, you know, mess anything up. You can see there, I mean, all of this just fitted perfectly. Uh, there are no gaps or anything like that. Everything is nice and flush and we get that contrast that we want. Hardware is expensive for a hinderer. Uh, titanium hardware is very expensive. There's going to be people fussing and complaining about that. It is what it is. Um, this is an awesome build. I can't wait until he gets his titanium scale, and then I will absolutely install that one. Uh, but for the time being, this is an absolutely beautiful. I mean, this is this is cooler than the hinders that I've shown on <laughs> like all of my own personal hinders. The very first hinder on this channel, well, the very first video I did was actually. A, an XM18 three and a half inch Harpoon Spanto in M390. And that was two and a half years ago back in generation four. So this is that knife, but in a working finish and with the triway pivot system, which was not available in uh, generation four or generation five. So this is gen six and then, you know, the cool hardware. But yeah, all the colors and the contrast and everything look great. I know you guys are thinking, um, why doesn't he have a bronze pocket clip and a bronze uh, lock bar insert? Uh, he's looking for some, and uh, those will be installed as soon as they are, uh, you know, available. And they might be right now. We I just talked to them this morning, and I was like, hey, are you going to put a, uh, a bronze clip and a bronze filler tab on there? He said, yeah, I'm looking for them. So uh, it, I'll see if I can find some. We'll get that ordered and get them put on. But yeah, tell me what you guys think. Um, this is this just worked out really, really well. Not too many complications. Um, if there's any other tips I can give you, uh, one thing that I did not do when I was pulling the pivot out, I left the knife like this with the blade down. You really, as dangerous as it might seem, you really should have the blade like this. And that way, when you pull things out and it comes apart, you know, the blade's going to slowly kind of wobble over to this side. That way, when you do need to get the blade out, it doesn't rub up against the, uh, the liner there. So yeah. Um, here's another thing that people always ask me when they mod their hinders. That space, that's so bad. Look how, look how poor quality control, right? They have the, the scale like is lipped above this, the, uh, the liner. Guys, every single XM18 in existence with a liner and G10 scale looks like that. It's on purpose. Let me, let me get out my titanium one and I'm going to show you the only time that you're not going to have that is if you have an XM18 three and a half inch with a titanium scale because it replaces both the liner and the scale. So that's what it looks like on the titanium scale right there. This is a relief cut. Uh, this is so that you have excess room to get your thumb in there and disengage it. Every single XM18 and XM24 look like that. Let me get out my Dark Horse XM24 to show you guys that. Those of you who own the ZT0562, 
Look in there. It's the same thing. It's exactly the same thing. This is not an error. Here's my dark horse. Exactly the same thing. They are cut like that on purpose. Uh, if they, um, you know, cut the liner, if they cut a scallop into the liner, um, and then they cut a scallop into the G10 scale to make that all flush, that that liner would be a razor blade. It would essentially be a seatbelt cutter. Like once you pull that thing off there, um, the, the liner would have this razor sharp edge to get it to meet seamlessly up with the, uh, with the liner. This makes everything modular, makes sure that everything fits the way that they want to, uh, and you can get your thumb in there. If you don't like that, the only remedy for it, if you consider it a flaw, is to get a titanium scale where it looks like this, right? So that's how it's been since Gen 1. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't look at that and think that there's an issue. I've had so many people ask me about that. Um, but anyways, yeah, I think this is going to be pretty much it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed um, this little, you know, part installation. If you guys have any questions, be sure to leave them down below. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at Metal underscore Complex. And like I said, there will be links for there will be links for hinderer knives and all the parts you could imagine down in the description so that you can come up with your own build if you want to. Uh, using the links does benefit my channel, so I appreciate that. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex. They'll go right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.